Welcome to the kitchen of chaos. Today we're going to make lasagna. Uh, actually, it's tonight. It's 10.30 the night before. I'm going to start with some sausage. Any kind of Italian sausage you have will work. The only kind I could find is this with uh, the natural casings on it. So I'm going to split them down the sides and take the sausage out of it so that it will be more like a ground meat. And then I'm going to brown them in this pot, this pan for a minute. And then we'll um, cook the onions and garlic in the juice from the meat. First I need to change a battery. Pardon me whilst I adjust my accoutrements. Okay, so the sausages are sausaging and the casings have been removed. And now I'm going to mince up some garlic and a couple of three onions and uh, we shall continue at that point. I don't think you need to watch me chop the onions. You all know how to do it. Of course it's better to start with uh, non-case Italian sausage for this if you want to do it this way. Um, however, if you use a couple of spatulas and put them right next to each other in this fashion, one there and the other one over here, like, like that, and just kind of go across It'll kind of uh, mix them back up. It's a pain, but that's all the sausage I have. So if you, can, if you want to do this kind of sauce or sauce, start with the ones that are not in the cake. Alrighty, so the sausage is mostly broken up. You see there are some larger chunks, and that's okay. Kind of makes it more interesting for people to bite into something that they can recognize as meat. When in the final product, I apologize for the steam. Um, you don't want to necessarily cook this until it's hard done. You want to leave it so that it's slightly moist because it's going to cook a little bit when it um, gets assembled into the lasagna. But basically, you just want to render all of its uh, mono unsaturated, cruelty free, expeller pressed oil. So that you can, uh, and a lot of people will drain that off, but uh, I, I think it has quite a bit of flavor. And there's lots of fennel and uh, red chilies and stuff in here. And it's, it's kind of meat juice, so I mean, it's good stuff. So I use that to uh, saute the onions and garlic in. And um, they're over here wait, awaiting chopped onions, chopped garlic, a couple, uh, oh, probably 20 or so or so cloves of garlic. And then we're going to put in some crushed tomatoes. These are This is organic crushed tomatoes with basil because it was cheap today. And uh, some red wine, I guess, if you have it. Some Italian seasoning. Some fresh basil. And salt and pepper. And, um, oh, uh, probably a little bit of this stuff. This stuff I've heard about, you've heard me talk about before. I love this stuff. I used to use, um, Knorr chicken bouillon cubes until I found out they had MSG in them and this stuff actually is a lot more flavorful and it's kind of make, pretends, your, makes your sauce pretend like you spent a lot of time making a, a base for it so that's what I'm going to use a uh, tablespoon or so of that maybe a couple of tablespoons I don't know depending on how much you make but and then some uh, balsamic vinegar eventually I think a little bit and that's basically you're just basically making a a marinara, and then I, on this one I'm going to keep the meat separate and uh, kind of layer it in at the end, I think, because I'm going to blend up the sauce because my son will blow chunks in an extremely uh, regular and spectacular fashion if you taste the slightest bit of a piece of an onion. This little thing will make him spew, spew forth the contents thereof. So I have seen that happen too many times, and so I've decided that I just blend up my sauces now, and it saves everyone a lot of aggravation, and it doesn't taste any different, really. Um, sometimes I'll do one unblended and one blended, but I don't feel like doing that tonight, so I'm just going to blend this up, this marinara after it's done. Blended or uh, food processor is actually okay, too. It doesn't get quite as smooth, and um, that's fine. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. After this is uh, finished getting the pink out of this, I'm going to... Um, Strain it basically in a colander, and then use that juice to cook the uh, start cooking the onions. Okay, so we add the onions first to the sauce. 
the, the uh, oil I mean, oil and juices, the sausage juices. This is actually pretty awkward with the camera. I hope you appreciate the sacrifices that I'm making for <laughs> Okay, so, okay, enough comedy jokes. Uh, the gun onions have been uh, going for a little while, and you can see that the uh, juices have been uh, reduced. They're getting a little bit soft, so I'm going to put in the garlic and uh, let it go for a little while. And then the I think I'll put in some wine. I have some terrible cooking wine, some red wine. Um, let that kind of get going a little bit before I add the tomatoes. And then, uh, just this Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. If it needs salt, it probably won't need salt because of the wine and the sausage. And these also have salt in them too. Don't let them fool you. They're salted. So don't just dump salt and stuff, because everything pretty much has salt in it. And high fructose corn syrup, if you're not careful. <laughs> uh, those bastards. Um, but I uh, will put in the basil at the very end, and then I'm going to let it cool off, and then put it in the fridge overnight, because I'm tired. And I'll blend it in the morning, or before I assemble it, I guess. So that is going to go for a little while, and I will add the tomatoes. Okay, l'herbe. This is the mint, actually. It's uh, some sort of mint that my friend grew for me. And it's dried, and I just i am putting it in a little bit, crunch it off of there and let it fall in there. Because I found that it actually adds quite a bit of flavor to things, and it's kind of the, hmm, that's good, what is it kind of flavor. No one can ever figure out what it is. It, it works really well with meat dishes, and... Uh, I found that I like it a lot. And this is some purple sage. It's also dry. I'm just going to break off a couple or three or four of these guys and the rub them. That smells good still. It's from last year and it still smells good. Um, I find uh, mixing non-traditional herbs is not it's blasphemy. It is good. And it adds a lot of flavor and a lot of people cannot figure out what it is. But if you have any fresh herbs, pretty much any fresh herbs will be good. Ah, my non-stick pan is not non-stick anymore. I will have to take it out and shoot it soon. But oh, that smells good. That sage and mint in there. It smells like uh, irrigating at my grandfather's farm when I was a child. It smells good. Um, so, let's see. I think it's probably about time to put the some wine in there, some horrible cooking wine that everyone says not to use. That about, oh, three quarters of a cup or so. Turn up the heat and let it reduce a bit. And, and um, let me get those oils going. And it, the alcohol actually supposedly helps the tomatoes have more, bring out more of the tomato flavor. I haven't done the science on it myself. So I will have to trust those who have gone before. But, uh, reduce that down a little bit, and that also helps the garlic and onions finish cooking. And then we're going to put the tomatoes in, simmer it a bit, add some black pepper and uh, Italian seasoning, which is uh, whatever the normal stuff is. Thyme, garlic, marjoram, onion, rosemary, oregano, basil, savory, and sage. And it's dried to within an inch of its life, but it actually adds flavor, so I'm going to use it. And then I'm going to put in some fresh basil, as I already said.